let's talk about how to build a subscription based business or add a subscription to your business in order to help supersize and grow it. There are huge advantages to having recurring income. I guess that's the number one advantage of having a subscription based business, meaning something that we deliver to people on a, a repetitive basis. Usually they automatically get it. They subscribe just like a magazine subscription. You subscribe, you get it for 12 months or three years or how many every years you subscribe to it. A lot of products and services, um, at least the smart businesses are strategically adding some kind of a recurring income to their products and services. Even my toothbrush has a subscription where you can get a new head and a new battery every three months or something for your toothbrush because it's subscription based. Now they have a supply of recurring income. They know people are going to get and spend X number of dollars every month, no matter what. And depending on the number of subscribers you have, this can be actually millions and millions of dollars. So how do you go about doing that? How do you go about creating it? In addition to it giving you a sense of security and predictable income, you also have the ability to do more long range planning and strategizing because you know that you've got a certain level of income coming in no matter what. <laughs> now, it also serves our customers better. It offers them a better experience and it uh, allows us to create better long-term relationships with our customers. It's also very flexible and scalable. What you can do and how you can do different levels of subscription or membership or whatever you want to call it in your business, it, it's limited pretty much only by your imagination. Uh, so how do we go about doing that? Well, number one, like anything else, we start with market research and validation. We get an idea and then we want to look into it. For one, is anybody else doing it? Are they doing it the same way we plan on doing it? Are there lessons that they've learned that we should know to not even try to do because it's a waste of our time, energy, and resources? But everything we do should begin with analyzing and researching our customers needs, pain points, preferences, what it would work best for them because we're providing this service for them so that they will become lifelong customers of ours and will help us with our recurring income. Uh, so we need to know their pain points. We need to know what is important to them and what isn't important to them. And we want to deliver things that are important to them. And we test that and figure it out. We just don't throw what we want to do out there and hope that it sells. There's a lot of that push selling and push marketing in the world. And that means that there's a lot of failed companies too, because people will only buy what they actually, what they want, not what they need, what they want They buy what they need too, but they, they like to buy what they want. Uh, so then the second step is of course, what is our value proposition? What are we offering people and what makes what we're offering different and something that they want to get only from us? Uh, so we need to have some type of unique benefits and some type of value. Otherwise, why would people bother subscribing to us? Third and very, very important is a seamless customer experience. When it comes to recurring <coughs> billings and recurring income, one of the most important areas to automate and optimize continually is the touch points of your customer, your customer experience. Uh, you want to make sure they have a seamless billing process, that it just happens automatically and that it's it's always right and accurate, right? We want to make sure that there is anywhere that there could be friction in the buying process. We want to eliminate that. We want to make it super easy for people to, to get what they want, be satisfied, to be able to make changes in it. All of this can be automated nowadays. And then finally, our fourth step is <coughs> uh, to go ahead and continue to continuous improvement. Really surprised, Sharon, <laughs> to do things to optimize our subscription or our membership on an ongoing basis, right? Listen to the feedback from the customers. What are they loving? What are they not loving? What are they buying? What are they not buying? Use data driven decisions and data to help us to know what to continue to do, right? And that involves, you know, listening to what customers have to say. If they say there's this one little friction point, fix it. If they say they that they don't like this, it's too expensive, then ask yourself what you could do to impact and beef up that offer to make it not feel so expensive. That means it doesn't feel valuable enough to them. So again, always optimizing based on data and information, our, our system and our processes and automating them. And don't automate them to the point that they can't get in touch with the human being. I, maybe that's just one of my pet peeves, but boy, it's frustrating in this day and age of automation when 
it is impossible. Literally, there are companies nowadays that have a subscription base that it is impossible to ever talk to a human being that can solve your problem. And automation cannot solve all of our customers' problems. It can solve most of our problems as business owners, but not our customers. And we're here to make our customers' lives easier or better in some way, shape, or form. All right, love to know your experience with this. Oh, I should give a couple of examples. A couple of examples of incredibly successful groundbreaking and disrupting of industries, uh, subscription-based companies are Netflix. I mean, I don't even remember how long I've had a Netflix account. It was back before it was, it was less than $10 when I got it, I remember. So that's how many years I've had a Netflix account. But Netflix with their library, incredible library, and it's continually evolving, growing based on data-driven information from customers and preferences. It, it's it's kind of like Facebook. Hey, this is your news feed. This is what you like. Netflix, sort of the same thing. These are your movies. This is what you've watched. This is what you continued. It's like reading a book and putting in a bookmarker. It bookmarks your spot in different shows for you or in different movies so you can watch for a little bit and then go back and watch later. Incredibly customer-friendly process. Now, I personally have never had to contact customer service, so I don't know if their customer service is great. I would imagine that it's probably pretty good. Uh, so Netflix literally uh, was the first one on the scene for a subscription-based streaming platform, meaning changing the way we get entertained. Uh, I go to far less movies since having Netflix than I ever did be before having Netflix. I bought a whole lot of CDs, DVDs, remember those? And uh, VHS tapes, remember VHS tapes? I cleaned out my house a few years ago and I literally had 10 boxes of VHS tapes plus all the newer technology. Uh, th another example is Spotify. I do not subscribe to Spotify personally. Uh, I suppose if I drove a lot or commuted a lot nowadays, I would because they have, I don't know if they have millions. Yeah, they probably have millions of songs and podcasts on their platform and you can customize it. You can make your own playlists. You can do all kinds of things technologically, according to my children that have changed and actually disrupted the music industry and they again were one of the biggest and first uh, they they seamlessly connect to other platforms i do have a i know i don't listen to it i don't subscribe but i do have a podcast on spotify so that's that's a testament to how simple and easy they are to use so that's it that is our topic for today love to know do you have a recurring income component to your business and if so share it in the comments below and share what you like best about it or or one of the biggest lessons you learned in implementing that and if you don't have one share that too and maybe we can come up and design one together all right have an awesome day i'll of course see you tomorrow